start practicing taking ownership on your own because it's way easier to take ownership on your own as compared to taking ownership around someone else. When you take ownership on your own, it's only you judging yourself and you know that. And so how much are you taking ownership in your relationship? And I think everyone is either taking too much ownership, that's the, the side I tend to be on, or too little. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, episode number 1,422, New Seasons Bring Up Old Reasons. Today, for episode number 1,423, as promised, a vulnerable conversation about love. So Alan and I were on the road last week. This is our first time back in the studio in what seems like forever i don't know maybe the last day i recorded a podcast episode was last wednesday i think this is the longest i've gone without recording an episode in maybe Years. a year yeah, yeah it's 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 wild but here we are why are we doing this episode oftentimes i'm on other shows or we're on coaching calls or group coaching or meetups or whatever it is and we have said this many times we all are going to end up in a relationship most likely not everybody will, but we have relationships. We all are going to experience love in some way, shape, or form, whether it's love for an intimate partner, love for a pet, love for a family member, whatever it may be. Money, we are all going to use money, and we all live in a physical body, but a lot of us don't know about our physical body. We don't know a ton about health, we don't know a ton about wealth, and we don't know a ton about love because we're not taught about it. We're not really taught about it. You and I are blessed because we have amazing relationships, so I figured if we could talk openly about love in general and how our perspective of love has shifted, that would be a powerful episode from my perspective. That's what I was thinking when I decided we would do this episode. We did, I think we did a vulnerable conversation about something in, a couple of months ago. I don't know if it was a vulnerable conversation about insecurity or... I don't remember what it was. Well, I know we did a meetup about love recently. Yeah, we did. You did? I did a summit about love last week. At the end of the day, I believe this, the the things that are the hardest are the things that are closest to the heart. Mm -hmm. And you said that before. And I don't know. Being a being an entrepreneur is one of the, the best ways in the world to learn about yourself. I think the only better way to learn about yourself is to be in a relationship. Agreed. Because when you're in a relationship, you and you love this person. I mean, you have love for this person. You think about this person all the time. This is your person. The mirrors you're going to get are just some of the hardest ones in the world. And I don't have any specific ones at the top of my mind, but it's it's almost like you're not playing go fish you're playing the highest level of poker possible and you're always all in and you always all you have all of your money on the table and if you lose it's going to be a terrible terrible loss that's how i feel about true true love being married having a family that there's a lot more pressure mm -hmm. because the benefits are a lot higher but the potential disastrous results are a lot higher as well kev I want to... <laughs> back, hey we're back at it. Yeah, we're back at it. Here we are. We're back. We're back. Kevin and I spent a lot of time in a car. Kevin drove us to Pittsburgh, and we've spent 16 plus hours in a car together in the last three to four days. So we talked a lot, and I we gave a speech in Pittsburgh for a fraternity called Alpha Chi Rho, and Alpha Chi Rho is a organization that I was a part of back in college that had a really positive impact on me during a challenging time. We've done a ton of reminiscing, me in particular, because this brought me back. I saw some people uh, that I knew in college and it was like people I hadn't seen in a decade. It's wild. Mm. And in the car, I did some napping while Kevin was driving and I was just processing so much memories were flowing through my mind if you've ever watched an old movie that you saw as a kid it's like watching the movie again but from this new awareness and i do this all the time and i was thinking about 
the relationships that I had in college, friends, intimate relationships, some of the stories that came up during it, during the speaking event, speaking engagement. And Kev, I think a good frame for this episode that would be valuable is you and I reminisced a lot about those days when I was in college and you were working at the gas station and you were a firefighter or in the fire academy rather. Mm. Let's talk from the frame of what we didn't understand. Because if we're talking about what we didn't understand in our early 20s, late teens, because Kevin and I spoke with mostly undergrads, which in this case were people that were 19, 20, 21 years old. And it was wild. And it was 19, 20, and 21-year-old men because it was a fraternity, not a sorority. And so it just brought up all of my mentalities back in college all of my understandings back then or lack thereof understanding. So I think we should talk a little bit about what we understand now as a 33 year old man in a committed, uh, committed, committed relationship and myself 34 in a committed relationship because both of you are, you and I are all in Mm -hmm. you're married. So you're perceived as more all in, but I told Emilia at the beginning, we talked to each other where this is it for us. This is the one. And the, fears that can arise when you are all in to Kevin's original point. It's the biggest mirror. It's the most challenging work in the world, but it's also the most rewarding. And if you do it right, the relationship just gets better and better and better, but the challenges are there and it's more inner challenges than outer challenges. It's obviously both, you know, obviously like, well, who's going to do the dishes and who's going to get the groceries and who's going to take care of the pets and who's going to, that kind of stuff is easy. It still brings up, but what, what does it do? It brings up the inner stuff. So let's talk about what we didn't understand. So my question for you, Kev, what's the, what's the biggest thing that you just genuinely didn't understand in your early twenties or late, late teens? About love. I would say the the more you love someone, the more you have to be willing to take ownership. I never, never connected those two things. Because you know, something might not be my fault, quote unquote, but I have a part of it. So there is, I don't have to take full responsibility for everything, but I have to take some responsibility for everything. Whatever that means. Sometimes taking responsibility is allowing somebody else to take the responsibility they need to. So you don't take on you don't take on all the responsibility. Sometimes that's the right amount of responsibility. I would say that. That was that's probably the biggest thing. I was thinking of that recently, and when you're in a real deep, authentic, connected, lifelong relationship, there is no hatch to get out. I mean, you can choose that if you want, but I don't want to choose that. So it, you're always looking for, you, you can't look for a way out. You can't say, you know what? I don't really, I don't really like feeling the way I feel right now. I know I made a mistake, but I don't want to take ownership for that. I'm going to go whatever. There, There isn't that. It's a game that never ends. There is no time limit. There are no goals. There is no arena. It's a game that never ends. And you're always trying to get a little bit better. But I think that ownership piece of it is is big. And again, we're talking about intimate relationships, I suppose, in this episode. But you and I, one of the reasons you and I have gotten closer is because we have better ownership. Right? We, I forgot to bring to our, our lapel mics and... And there were, you know, circumstances. There's always circumstances. And I said, well, I don't, I understand the circumstances, but I don't want to put it off on somebody else. Like, I knew better. I should, I should have been prepared. I, I want to make sure I take ownership for what I can have, what I could take ownership for in this situation. Right? Because I, I think that's important. And obviously I love you as a business partner and a friend. That, I would say ownership. Ownership is one of the most important things in the world for both partners. Or, I guess, as many partners as there are in the relationship. You do you out there. I know, I'm sure there's people that have that. Yeah, ownership. Ownership is taking responsibility for what you 
could have done better, should have done better, want to have done better. Ownership is taking responsibility for mistakes you've made. There's a really good example of ownership that came up in book club yesterday. We ended up doing book club on Sunday instead of Saturday because we were traveling all day Saturday. And somehow ownership came up. I think it was responsibility or ownership. Those two are fairly interchangeable in my opinion. And someone, somehow the story came up about the lapels and how you and I, oh, okay. So Brandon runs book club. He's the director of book club, but he also is the director of speeches. So Kevin and I, after every speech, we do wins and losses, what we call an experience review. And the wins were like four or five. And then the losses were like 50. And it was a really strong experience all overall, but we tend to focus on what we can improve rather than what we did well, which again, can be dangerous with your self-worth. Be careful. But Brandon was joking and laughing about the list Mm. because it was, you know, 50 losses and only a couple wins. But one of the losses was the AV person at the hotel hadn't put batteries in the lapel mics, so we had to start late because the audio wasn't working over the speaker system. And Kevin and I, in the losses, took responsibility anyway. Here's what we took responsibility for. We didn't take responsibility for the fact that there wasn't batteries in there. We did take responsibility for the fact that we didn't check if there were batteries. And more importantly, we said next time we're going to go straight to the AV guy. We need to meet the AV guy first, just like at Next Level Live. That's one of the first things we do is tech first. The night before. The night before. I go the night before to connect with the AV guy. Or AV person, in this case, AV guy, yeah. And so what we took ownership of was what we could control what we could have done. And and that's one thing that I'll say that we, I believe we do a really good job of. And quite frankly, to bring this back to love and relationships, love in particular, I'll share this briefly and then I want to go to the thing that I think I didn't understand. I know I didn't understand that I think is most valuable, but Kevin and I got back yesterday at, I think I got back at 2.30 or so. I had book club at 4.00. And then I had a relationship talks coaching call at 5.15. And we also have a new kitten named Tiger Lily, Tilly for short. And so now Emilia spent some time while I was away training Tilly because she's only five weeks old. She's this little, little thing. And Tucker and Tariel, my dog and my cat, they don't know that they can accidentally kill Tilly if they are too playful because they don't know their own strength. So we kind of have to the way in which we're training them has to be in separate rooms for now. I'm, I'm very much looking to the forward to the time when Tilly is strong enough and big enough to where she can play with her brother and sister without it being a concern. And she's quickly getting there, which is great. But there's a whole system of, you know, put it, feeding them, cleaning the litter boxes, making sure they're in separate rooms at separate times, making sure. So I come home and I pulled my back out when we were on the road. It was a lot of sitting and then we worked out really hard together. And anyways, I pulled my back out. So that's made everything really challenging. So anyways, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. This morning, I ended up sleeping 12 hours last night, 11 hours and 47 minutes, I think. Time in bed is what my aura ring said. And so I was in rough shape. She woke up, she's not feeling well. And so we're both trying to start our weeks on Monday from a place of definitely being behind plus the new kitten, plus all the other things, groceries, blah, blah, blah. And again, all still wonderful problems to have, but problems nonetheless. I was, she came up and said something and I was slightly snippy with this one remark of like, no, I know. Like I totally, and it was, I'm very, very rarely snippy with Emilia. Emilia and I have never fought. We've never raised our voice. We've never stormed out. We have ridiculously high standards when it comes to how we treat each other. But I was a little snippy. Now, understandably snippy in some regards, you know, I'm doing a lot of the stuff. I'm overwhelmed. I haven't unpacked. I got to be with Kev recording at XYZ. So hopefully you're out there thinking about your own relationship, your own love, your own past, your own current. I could have just moved forward. Not a big deal. I could have easily just been like, oh, you know, whatever. Sometimes I get snippy. Sometimes I'm late. Sometimes I'm blah, blah. No, 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 no. So here's what I did. I said, ah, that was kind of snippy. That wasn't very kind. So she was taking a shower and I went and apologized and gave her kisses. And she said, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm like, I'm not feeling well. My back is killing me. You know, I'm, I'm behind, I'm overwhelmed. 
and she said, same deal. I'm t- feeling terrible. Like, you know, she's like, this is why I hate travel. It always, it always hurts the relationship sometimes. <laughs> Not always, but sometimes it does. And just trying to get back in the swing of things. And I know that people out there are relating to this. You know, when you're overwhelmed, some of you have kids. I'm, I have pets. I'm, when, I, when we have kids, it'll be even more challenging by a significant margin. For sure. The point that I'm making is I took ownership. I easily could have brushed that off of, no, that was on you or no, that's not a big deal. But those little things, they stack up. And I would much rather just get back in rapport and get back on the same page and just take ownership. And so how much are you taking ownership in your relationship? And I think everyone is either taking too much ownership, that's the the side I tend to be on, or too little. And I think that was a good example of that. Hey everyone, I'm Helen Baker from Melbourne, Australia. I'm an entrepreneur and a client of Alan's from Next Level University. I've had many business coaches in the past and I can honestly say that Alan is seriously next level. He has this unique ability to help you find a solution to your business problems. I can be vulnerable with Alan, I can share anything and feel comfortable in his presence. I feel empowered to do incredible things. So if you're looking for a business coach, I highly recommend Alan because he will be instrumental in achieving your success. Hmm. What was, what's your lesson? Mine, the thing that I didn't understand when I was younger, Mm -hmm. the paradigms. It was 2020, no, tail into 2019, Kevin and I co-hosted an event called Top Notch Live. You've probably heard of it if you're a long-term listener, if you're a new listener. It was a really quite big event in hindsight. Eight speakers, full day, 100 people. And Tori Aletto, one of our friends who has a podcast or had a podcast, I don't know if she's still doing it or not. Mm-hmm. The Imperfect Person? No? Okay. She is a family therapist and she coaches or does therapy with couples. She's a couples counselor, for lack of better phrasing. I don't know her exact title. But she's been studying relationships for at least 15 years, if not 20 years. And she gave a speech on intimate relationships. The very first thing she said, I'll never, ever forget. She got on stage and the very first flashcard she had, because she was a new speaker at the time, she said, intimate relationships are about growth. The purpose of an intimate relationship is growth. And then she went into why that's so powerful. I now coach couples all over the world. I have a Conscious Couples podcast. I'm constantly doing events about relationships. A lot of listeners know that. That is the most important thing, hands down. If I was on a Relationship Talks coaching call yesterday, if the purpose of your relationship is growth, every challenge becomes an opportunity. Mm. If the purpose of your relationship is fun, I honestly think you're in trouble. And I'm not... I'm not saying this lightly. I used to have relationships that were built on friends and fun. She has her group of friends. I have my group of friends. We have fun. I talked about that in the last episode last week, one of the episodes last week. That's a fun-centered paradigm. Our relationship's purpose is fun and friends. The problem is when you have challenges, when you have disagreements, when you have arguments, when you have fights, is that an opportunity to grow? Or is it, uh, you know what, honestly, this isn't working out. Whereas with Emilia and I, our, the purpose of our relationship is growth and contribution. So every time we have a challenge, it's an opportunity to take more ownership and learn about yourself. Learn about each other so that you can be better. And then when you become better, you have more to give, which is the contribution piece. So that's what I didn't understand in my early 20s, late teens. I didn't understand that the purpose of an intimate relationship, if you decide in advance with your partner, the purpose is growth all of a sudden every challenge becomes a beautiful opportunity to become better. Mm. Another thing I didn't I didn't learn or I didn't understand is and this isn't something that I necessarily have experienced, but this is something I see all the time. Love disguises itself as many different things, especially if you're not very familiar with relationships. I'll I've told you this so many times you and I will have somebody mutual in our lives and we'll start seeing them say like, Oh, I love you so much. You're my everything. 
I'm so grateful I found you. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'll tell Alan, I'll say, they're in trouble. They are in trouble. Because you couldn't possibly, and again, this might sound judgmental. It might sound like a judgment. I don't mean it that way. But you've known each other for a month. The, the, the likelihood that you are deeply in love and just not super excited that you found somebody that you mesh with, I would bet it's probably going to be the second one. Now, I know you and Emilia are a very unique case in that. Mm -hmm. For sure. I know there but, are unique cases. But I do want to share this because I feel the same way when you say that. When, yeah. when, you, when you, Essentially what Kevin's is articulating is that whenever he sees a couple saying, I love you right away. and It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, because it's not built on a strong foundation. Emilia and I fell in love very quickly and we went very deep very quickly is what he's referring to. But Kev, I took it slow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. kiss her until our second date. I didn't end up sleeping and we share this stuff on the conscious couples podcast mm -hmm. so she has no problem with me sharing this stuff we didn't have sex right away we we were i i was playing the long game from the beginning yeah. i didn't want to make that mistake of letting the infatuation and the newness take over my emotions i didn't want to make a long-term decision based on short-term emotions so yeah. we were very i mean i think i i didn't ask her to be with me until three months later even though i was certain i wanted to be with her within the first week and i i didn't we kissed the second date. We slept together a month later plus at least. And I'm sharing this because I want to be vulnerable and I want to encourage people. When you find your person, you don't have to. When you find your person, you don't have to lock it up quick or anything like that. You, you can play a level-headed, positive, do it the right way. My, my thing was do not screw this up. Do this one right. That, do this one right. You're in no rush. You're in no rush. Just just let it organically grow. Let it develop. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, Kev, but no, I you're good. I want to make it clear that I do think that it, those are red flags. They really are. And and yep. you and I have talked behind the scenes. Kevin is, I'll call him the relationship predictor. He he is very very very. If if you if you bet on uh, Kevin watches UFC as you know, and every Saturday he bets on fights, and. With betting on relationships, Kev, you your percentage, you showed me very your UFC high. percentage is like 48% up or something. It's very, very high in the prediction. And I think one of the things he looks for is people that are being a little bit reckless with how quickly they're jumping in and getting infatuated. And they're not necessarily playing the long game out of the gate, or maybe they are, but you're, you're very high in your percentage. And I think that's important to share. We So we were in... Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's where we spoke. And we had our Airbnb and the gym was, I don't know, 12 minutes from the Airbnb or something like that. We went to the gym and you went one extra time than I did. So I think we went, we went Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You worked out in the gym three times. Mm -hmm. I worked out in the gym twice. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, what's your relationship with that gym? You feel like oh. it's a really good gym? Very good. Yeah, I love it. Got a lot of terrible reviews when really? I researched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You what? and I, it's dirty. The water bubbler takes all day to fill up. It's always packed. It got, there's a lot. It's it's filthy. Yeah, There's a, there was a lot of negative reviews. Here's the thing. We were only there for four workouts. We don't know. We haven't been there long enough. We don't know. We don't know what the truth of the gym is. It's good new. Point. It's massive. And there's it's way there. better than ours. At it's least way, way better, better than, than ours. Yeah, yeah it's, it's better than mine. It's big, there's different machines, there's different people, it's different energy, there's different music, everything's a little bit different. You can go to that gym for six months, and everything's the same, and everything becomes normal, and then maybe you do start to see the dust in the machines, yeah, that's kind of gross. Or maybe you do wait in line behind six people filling up their water bottles, and it takes 20 minutes. I think that's a really good analogy, because in the beginning, everybody loves their job in the first week. I've, I, I don't know. know if I've ever met anybody who says... Yeah, that was a mistake. This job blows. I don't know if I've ever met anybody who says that in the beginning. But six months down the road, when the luster of novelty and newness is worn off, that's when things start to happen. So I think that's why I'm fairly good at predicting it, just because in the beginning, every relationship is amazing. It's easy. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> you just show up and you are infatuated with each other. You can't say anything wrong. You... you you sweep the dust under the rug and you worry about it for a later day. So eventually that dust is coming back. 
And it's the same thing in a, a long-term serious relationship. If you're sweeping stuff under the rug, it's going to come up eventually. It's oh, just a yeah. matter of, of when and who is the one who creates the the carpet flipping over and exposing the dust. So, yeah. It's but, a good analogy for success as well. You know, you start a podcast first couple weeks. Oh, you it's know, awesome. Everybody's yeah, listening. It's the Everything's best. Everything's sexy yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Bodybuilding prep. I remember, oh, I get, I'm going to get these, I got to get posing trunks and my coach is telling me all this stuff and I get these new workouts and this new diet. This is amazing. And then a month in, it's like, this is, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Maybe I hate this. <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. So I thought that was a good analogy. Definitely. All right. Quick one. Rapid fire. Well, what would your, let's do this. Cause I know we're running a little bit longer. What next is your nuggets? Yeah. What's your next level nugget? Check in with what the purpose of your relationship is from your perspective and then also from your partner's perspective. If it is not, I, what I would say is if, if whatever paradigm and the paradigm, what I mean is the, you ever have a st- song stuck in your head? Of course. It's like that. It's the, it's the song that's stuck in your head. For Emilia and I, it's how do we grow? How do we grow together? How do we grow together? How do we grow together? How do we contribute more? How do we grow together? How do we contribute more? That's the song stuck in our head, both of us. I know one other couple where one of them is how do we grow together? How do we grow? How do we contribute? How do we grow? How do we contribute? The other one is how do we take care of the kids? How do we take care of the kids? How do we take care of the family? What's best for the family? That's okay. They have two different paradigms. Check in. What's the song playing? What's the song stuck in your relationship's head? And then what are the long-term pros and cons of that? Nice. What about you? Good luck following that up. Uh, it shouldn't, <laughs> no, shouldn't be hard. I can <laughs> bust that out pretty quickly. My next level nugget would be <laughs> asking yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, how much ownership am I taking? And not, real, real quick. Yeah. Every now and then, Kev will have a moment. Where I say something, I always know when the moment happens where you're like, wow, that's like really good. <laughs> it's actually not that often, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> that was one of those. That was fun for me. Well, that wasn't, I can't follow it up. And uh, and again, transparently, I'm also very tired. I did not sleep for 12 and a half hours. I slept for <laughs> eight and I got up at six o'clock and went to the gym. So I'm not running on all cylinders, but it was, it was really good. Thank you. I would say the next level nugget is start start practicing taking ownership on your own because it's way easier to take ownership on your own as compared to taking ownership around someone else. When you take ownership on your own, it's only you judging yourself and you know that. When you take ownership around somebody else, there is going to be a little bit more judgment. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Everybody everybody already knows. That's why ownership is so important. The other person already knows you messed up. They already know. And now they're trying to figure out what are you going to do with the fact that you messed up. If you take ownership, you're you're going to be better every time. I can't predict, I, I can't find any time you would not be more positive for taking ownership. Yeah. As long as it's your ownership to take. But yeah, so, okay. And again, this is not a me example. This has never happened. This will never happen. But uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was going through your social media the other day and I noticed that you follow all these people and then I don't know when, when I was looking over your shoulder I saw a message from one of those people come up what's going on there is there should I be worried two conversations that can happen you're paranoid I don't know why you're even asking me this you're wasting my time no nothing is happening or honestly one of those people is a potential client that I have been working with lately like just the ownership of, yeah, I happen to have a lot of people that message me. I, that was a conversation Tyron and I had in the beginning. Like you're going to see a lot of people in my DMs. A lot yeah. of people. And our, and our primary demographic is women. Yeah, and a lot of these people are going to be very attractive I've been extremely well. impressed with her in that regard. Yeah. That's been unbelievable. I thought when you and I first started this and we realized that our listeners were primarily women, I remember thinking that. And that was long before I met Emilia, but you and Taryn were dating. And I remember thinking this is going to be challenging for us Mm -hmm. because it's going to increase that way. And we've never had any problems. No. It's like unbelievable. I'm super impressed with them. I am too. They also trust us. So that's us also 
being very right. trustworthy, right? If they I would, were, to, I would say I'm also yeah. very impressed with us. Same, because if and there again, was ever a breach in trust, that would make that, yeah, wait, you know, and there never will be. So it's good. That's the that that's another next level nugget I would add is you have to take pride. Even even what I said there that might come off as arrogant to some people, understandably, but I I do believe I'm a very very good partner. I do believe you believe you're a very very good partner. That's Definitely. important. That's important. The last thing I want to do is get on a plane with a pilot who thinks they're not a good pilot. That's uh, pass. I don't want to get on a plane with somebody who's like, eh, you know, I'm really not that good. You know, most you'd be you'd be way safer flying with somebody else than me. Pass. Uh, <laughs> pass. How do I open this door? I'm off. But I'm off. there's the opposite end of that of a pilot who thinks he's the man. I know. I know. Or the woman. And, yeah. and isn't very good, which I is know. ego, right? So it's hard to decipher between those, but that's another Let's episode. just keep it at the layer, the layer I set it at. Let's fair. just keep it that's the layer fair. I Either set way. it at. And th- that's, that's a good enough analogy example for this episode. <laughs> <Excuse> <laughs> good me. enough. That's how we go to Next Level University. When good, good enough, enough is never enough, you'll always have enough, right? What was the Nice saying? work. Was that it? That was it. Yeah. When good that, enough is never enough, you'll always have enough. It's excellent. Nice. It's true. Next Level Nation, if you are looking for a community of like-minded individuals that you can share your love with. I love our community. We're the best community on the planet. We're the best family on the planet. I'll put our family and community up against any family and community. Please join Next Level Nation. Link will be in the show notes. You are safe there. You can express your truth. You can ask for help. You can ask for support. You can find peak performance partners. Be vulnerable. Be the most authentic version of you. When Kevin and I went and spoke, we did breakout sessions. We were with these people for three and a half hours and i led with that you're gonna be with us for three and a half yes, hours today. don't people lead with were, that yeah don't lead with that <laughs> and some of the people were very very open and honest about their challenges other people were really not as vulnerable and not as willing to admit where they need help our community is a place where you can ask for help in a safe way where you're not going to be seen as less than you're actually going to be seen as more than you're not going to be seen as weaker. You're actually going to be seen as stronger. And hopefully you join Next Level Nation and start to realize that that's the place to do that. And anytime who was anyone was ever disrespectful, they got booted. And we will continue doing that, quite frankly, because I think bullies are the reason why most people aren't helped. Because they're so afraid to be bullied, they don't want to share what's really going on. And then they never solve what's really going on because there's so many people that can help you with things because that's their life's work. Speaking of life's work, Jim Quick helps everyone with one thing. He was young and he got bad concussions, two really bad concussions. And he was told he was the boy with the broken brain. So if you've ever felt not smart enough or you've ever felt like learning is hard for you, he talks about meta learning, learning how to learn. And so this book is called Limitless. It is unbelievably powerful. We had some people in tears yesterday on book club. Book Club is every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm trying to say Eastern Time instead of Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Time. And we are 124 weeks in a row without a single miss. We are only doing one chapter per week. So just read. We are doing chapter two next week. And we hope to see you there. The link to register will be in the show notes. Next week for those listening is Saturday, August 12th. Just in case... Somebody's listening to this or later in the future. I should do that. I forget. Same. So yeah, I think I think I think that would be helpful if we start dating stuff. Definitely. Tomorrow, Alan, for episode number 1424. Mm-hmm. Junk from your past can be strengths in your future. We had a lot of time together in a very small car. We had a lot of time together in the Airbnb. The Airbnb was actually pretty large, but we yeah. spent most of the time pretty close to each other. We spent all day Friday giving a speech together. We spent a lot of time together. And we had a lot of time to talk about stuff about our past and how that has crossed over to our future. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Keep taking ownership. Next Level Nation. <laughs>